Namaste everyone. Sasadi Akar for the Punjabis and hello. How are you all doing? We are super excited for the March 11th Mumbai Love Festival. And what I'm doing here, I'm just going to wipe the lens. I'm just giving us a quick recap on how things are going in terms of we are really excited for the Mumbai events happening March 11th. So please do grab your tickets. And obviously, if you are watching this as part of the coaching, I know you would have already had it. If you're not part of the coaching, then do grab your tickets early as they are selling fast. This is a white party event, which means white outfits, white clothing, men, white blazer, white shirt. White full outfit if you want to. Ladies, I don't need to ask you how to dress because I know you already know. Beautiful white dresses, beautiful outfits, looking good. We are bringing together some incredible people for this event. And we're so proud to bring these people together. The reason why we're really proud is because as a whole group, there are so many great people coming into this event. We have people from London a team of love fest individuals that are going to be bringing a beautiful atmosphere, a beautiful vibe, helping us connect. My wife will be part of that. Other people will be part of this great group. And we're going to be coaching and helping to help you find your soulmate or connect with somebody at a deeper level at the event. So we're really excited for that. Really, really excited. So let's get started. I'm Sonny Second. For those of you that do not know me, I am an author. There's my book there. I've been doing coaching for the last seven, eight years now. And I fell into it because of my own pains. When I was young, I was um, 16, 17. I fell in love with this girl. She was beautiful. She was incredible. I thought she was the one. I thought I was going to marry her. Ended up, she cheated on me. You know why? Because I was too nice. I was so nice to her all the time. I was being so nice, so nice, so nice. It was sickening for her. She was like, get away from me. <laughs> Unfortunately, she cheated on me after two years of being together. And it broke me. My insides were broken. I was crying almost every night. I know, I know. I know, guys, you're going to be thinking, what's the matter with you? But I was young and she broke my heart. Miradil. <laughs> for the Indians there, my Punjabi is okay, not too good. But my John was done, all right? And my heart was really hurt. And then from there, I learned what was going on with me. And actually, what was going on? I was this needy, anxious person. I kept putting her over me. I kept focusing on her over me. So then she started focusing on herself over me as well, because that's what message I passed along. That was the image that I gave her. So then she took me for granted. And that is why she cheated, because she took me for granted. And I had to learn from that. I had to develop. I had to become better. And then my brother gave me this great tip. He goes, Sonny, you know what? You have to play hard to get. Can't let people in. I started studying the art of meeting women, the art of connecting with women. And it said, be closed off, be mysterious, don't allow them in. You know what? It worked. I, I would have girlfriend after girlfriend, don't judge me. All right, I was young, I'd have girlfriend after girlfriend, but I would never connect with them properly. I wouldn't let them into my heart. I wouldn't let them into me, so I became a bit of a player. The reason why, because I was hurt. I didn't want to go for that pain again. So because of that, I formed a new behavior. I didn't let anyone in. And the ladies, they loved it. <laughs> they liked it when I was treating them mean, not always being there, not being too available. I continued that pattern for a while. And it was working. It was what I call a successful pattern, but not for marriage, or successful for attraction. That makes sense? So successful for attraction, but not for marriage. Because then this is where the problem came. I was continuously dating in and out. And yeah, it was fun, but I didn't really connect with someone's heart or soul. And that was painful for me. So there was in then kind of relationships. It wasn't fulfilling. My heart wasn't being met. Until 
I met my wife and I declared it. I set an intention. I'm ready for a proper girlfriend. I'm ready for a partner. This was 10 years ago now. I'm ready to bring in a great partner into my life. 10 years ago, I was asking this. And as I asked it, little behold, she came into my life. She appeared um, at work and then we connected and we started to date. But I still had that pattern where I wasn't letting people into my heart. And she also had a lot of toxic patterns. So we had the worst relationship. We'll fight, we'll argue, we'll moan all the time. Well, after nine months of the relationship, my parents found out, my family found out, and they hated her. They hated this woman for everything she was. And they started putting that hatred into me. I was so confused. I was like, why, why is this happening in my life? Why do my family not like me? Why is this arguments happening for? What's this big, bad baggage? What am I doing wrong? And I was depressed. I was so depressed. I couldn't turn to my partner because I didn't want her to think I was weird. I couldn't uh, turn to my family because they hated me. I had nowhere to turn. I was working corporate finance. I hated corporate finance, right? Life just became really bad for me. And I wasn't a leader in my life. Instead, I was running away from my problems. I was escaping. Every time a problem appeared, I would run. I would go somewhere else, go somewhere else, go to alcohol, go out on a friend's birthday, go out on a night out, do this, do that. I will always be doing these things. I will always escape instead of facing my problems, instead of dealing with what was ahead of me. And as I was doing that, as I was doing that, I kept repeating the same patterns. I kept repeating the same patterns over and over again. The same pattern of having these arguments, these fights, but nothing moving ahead because I was avoiding the proper problems. I was avoiding the issues. I was avoiding the pain because I felt already it was too much hurt. And then in my deepest day of depression, I went and seeked out the best, which is a man called Tony Robbins. That's absolutely outstanding. He's my first mentor and I have so much love for this man. He truly helped transform my life to become better. He helped me believe in myself. He helped me start taking accountability for my life. He helped my girlfriend at the time, that my wife now, her start taking accountability for life and start creating a better life. And as he did this, we started to evolve. We started to let go of the baggage, the pains, the hurts that happened in the past. And instead, we started to create a better relationship. We started focusing on what energy are we putting into a relationship? What do we want to create within a relationship? How do we want to form a better relationship? And as we started to create that and understand these things, then we found a beautiful relationship together and we worked on it. We started creating better habits. One of them habits is taking accountability for your life. So one thing I force that everyone come into this event, write this down. You must take accountability for your relationships. You must take accountability for your relationships. What energy are you putting into your relationship? And we're going to cover this off on Tuesday with the live session. But what energy are you putting into your relationship? If you're putting negativity, toxic, arguments, blaming, being the victim all the time, what are you creating as a relationship? What, what are you adding to a relationship? And as, I, as we realized what we was putting into the relationship was negative and toxic, we resolved that. And then we both took accountability for our life and we now create a very beautiful relationship. Yes, we have our ups and downs. Yes, we have our struggles. However, we create a very beautiful relationship where I put her needs first and she puts my needs first. And this is the forming of a conscious relationship, a conscious, beautiful relationship where you put each other's needs first. Instead of saying, what can I get from this relationship? What can I take? We don't say, what can I take from this right now? We say, what can I add to this relationship? And I want to ask you to do the same thing. When you come to this event on March 11th, 
I want you to say, how can I add to this night? How can I add to somebody's evening? How can I add to this great thing? Rather than what am I going to get from this? What if there's no tall people? What if the elephants like this? That taken mentality is going to keep you in that stuck position. When you take from the universe, from God, the universe will take from you. When you give to the universe, when you give to life, life will give back to you. And this is a key philosophy. Please write that down. When you take from the universe, the universe will take from you. When you give, the universe will give to you. And it's very important to remember that in all aspects of life, love, energy, friends, money, everything. If you give, you'll get back. If you take, the universe will take as well. Okay, good. I remember hearing a story, and I'm not Christian, but I remember hearing a Christian story of this woman, and it was in 1960s. There was actually a shortage of coffee. And this woman always went to the church. Every month she'll go to the church, or every week, sorry, and she'll give money to the church, always give. And in her eyes, she was a good Christian woman, a very good Christian woman. And then the coffee shortage came and she went and hoarded. She brought loads and loads of coffee because there's a shortage. Next week, her house gets robbed. Everything gets stolen from her. And she goes to her pastor, like her, her priest within the church. What happened? I am a good Christian woman. I pay my taxes. I always contribute to the church, to charity. Why would that happen to me? And he said, what have you been doing recently? She's like, well, I stocked up on my coffee. And she took more than what she needed. She took more than what she needed. As she took more than what she needed, the universe took from her. And this is a philosophy that I truly believe in. Because a taker will always take. And when you give, you receive so much. It's happened in my life. I see it around with every one of my clients. So as I, um, as my life started to change and things started to get better with my relationship, I was like, I need to help the world with this. So I qualified as a coach. I qualified with Tony Robbins coaching, as well as NLP, as well as timeline therapy, hypnosis, many, many areas, CBT, so many therapies in order to get a really good understanding of life. Where it really got good was when I was helping people out and I started to learn about relationships even better. And I started understanding what was causing pain in a relationship and what was making relationships work. And when I understood this, I've been able to help so many people. This is why I published a book to help people. So what I'm sharing with you is gold knowledge Normally I charge for these group coaching sessions. Normally I charge a good amount. And the reason why I say this, not because I have anything to sell you, but I want you to value what I'm saying. I want you to value the effort that I'm putting into this for you to be able to up level, to get to that level of focus for you to bring love into your life. So March 11th, Mumbai, it's going to be absolutely incredible. We have artists, DJs, performers, everything happening. I want you to focus on what you want. Focus your time on what you want. On the call, we covered off beliefs. A belief system is a thought that we believe in. If I believe I can open a door, because I've done it many times, I'll be able to open most doors. If it's like a new door and I've never seen it before, my beliefs might be like, oh, how do I open this? But you would be able to build new beliefs once you do it. When we're in relationships or thinking about relationships, we always carry a belief. Relationships are bad. Women are after one thing. Guys are after one thing as well, right? Women, we say the same thing as well. <laughs> Women are after money. Guys are after that, yeah? We say the same thing. We speak the same language. And there are worries that come up to us. Relationships are hard work. That's a belief. Um, another belief you have to settle and compromise within relationships. Another belief, 
once you marry your life will be unhappy. It's a negative belief. These beliefs limit you. They put a ceiling on what you're capable of doing, right? Relationships are beautiful. Marriages are beautiful. Your partner could be your best friend. I, I'm so lucky to be married to my best friend. Relationships are absolutely beautiful. They're incredible things. However, I believe relationships are incredible. If I go into a relationship with you, and yes, I'm talking to you, and I think you're after my money, I'm going to find every reason to think you're after my money. Um, we'll go to a restaurant and I will pay a little bit more. And I'll think, oh, see, you're after my money. Oh, you'll go to a coffee shop and you don't put your hand in your pocket. See, you're after your mo my money. You want me to pay. You will find reasons to believe what you believe. And our ego really wants to be correct. So when you believe a thought, men are bad, your ego wants to reaffirm that thought as much as possible. So your ego will go, men are bad. You will find a bad guy just for your ego to feel, yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I'm so smart. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is how the mind tricks you. And this is why we must break out of them beliefs. So write down right now in the comments on YouTube here, what are some negative beliefs that you have around relationships? Can you give you a second? You're not good enough for love. No one truly wants you. They only want you for one thing. Relationships are bad. Relationships are painful. No one would love me. It's going to give you a second. And you can pause this if you want to. Good. So now we want to find new beliefs. Because what you focus on in life is what you find. What you focus on in life is what you find. I get this beautiful example of my mom. She's such a beautiful woman. Uh, raised as a single parent. Incredible woman. Most beautiful heart. I love her dearly. But my mom... Loves to watch the news, right? So she watches the news a lot in a day. Morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, evening. So my mum's world, what she sees is fear, is scary. She walks outside, I'll see her on the street. I say, hey, mum. She goes, ah! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's what she'll do. She gets so scared. Ah! <laughs> Whoa, what's the matter? <laughs> Oh, don't jump up on me. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was right next to you, mum. What do you mean jump up on you? <laughs> but because she programs her brain and her thinking to watch the news constantly, she always sees danger in her life. What she's focused on, you get it? What she's focused on is danger, is worry, is negativity. As you focus on that, you bring it in. So then she would see, because remember, her brain wants to be correct. She would see an argument in town and she would say, see? She would see a fight and she would say, see? She would see these things because her reality, her focus is on that. I believe the world is amazing. I believe the world is incredible. I believe there's beautiful people in the world. I don't watch the news. I stopped watching the news around eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. I watched a little bit over the COVID period, but I don't watch the news. Reason why is because I choose what I put into my mind, okay? I choose what I put into my mind. So I don't watch the news. I believe the world is beautiful. I walk out, I feel the world is fine. Yes, I'm crossing the road. I'm precautious. I'm not living in la-la land. I know there's cars, there's danger. I hear arguments. I see, yeah, there could be a fight there, but I'm not over-focused on it, right? I know what's happening in my life is I'm bringing in incredible people into my life. I'm bringing in the right people into my life. So as I'm walking through this world, I'm seeing better people. I'm seeing somebody that smiles at me and I smile back. I'm seeing somebody that gives to charity. I'm seeing somebody that's kind to an old woman. This is what I'm seeing because I believe the world is beautiful. Do you get what I mean, right? Do you get what I mean? This is very important for you to understand because when we have a belief and we believe that belief so much that we're going to create a deeper meaning to that belief. So what I want us to do is whatever your old belief was, that limiting belief, I want to ask you, is it absolutely true? Is it absolutely true that that belief is correct? For example, that you're not worthy of love. 
Say you're not worthy of love. Is that absolutely true? No. And what happens to you if you truly think that thought? What really happens to you? What happens to you inside? You close off, you go quiet, you go shy, you get nervous. What happens to you? You get scared, you get worried. What happens? You don't go and approach somebody. You don't go out dating. You don't put yourself out there. What happens? You get scared. You, you close yourself off. Okay, good. Is that really who you are? What would your life be like if you didn't have that thought that you wasn't worthy of love? If you didn't have that thought that you wasn't worthy of love, what would your life be like? You'll be more open. You'll be more loving. You'll be more caring. You would receive love more and give love more. Right. And whatever your belief was, that limited one, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Is it absolutely true? Second question. Who do you become when you believe that thought? What version of yourself do you become when you believe that thought? Third question, how would you behave if that thought never existed? Did that belief that thought never existed? Good, take your time to answer them questions. Because what we want to do is focus on the better. We want to focus on incredible people coming into your life. We want to focus on the relationship you truly want. We want to focus your attention. Just like that. Focus on the yellow there. The yellow. Now you focused on yellow. See how much more yellow you can see around you. Is there more yellow in the room? Where else can you see yellow? Can you see more yellow? Probably see it on my teeth. <laughs> how much more yellow can you see? Because when you focus on the yellow, the yellow will increase. The yellow will go more and more and may even think that's yellow. That's gold, but it looks yellowish. The more you focus on it, the more you will see of it. I'll come back to now and forget all the yellow. I want you to focus on what you want. So I want you to create a new belief. I want you to create a belief around relationships. Here's an example. I attract honest genuine people in my life i am worthy of a beautiful relationship i am more than enough for any relationship i grow every day in life i get better and better every single day i am more than enough to bring in the right partner the right partner is coming into my life. I want you to believe these thoughts. I want you to truly believe them. And the way you believe them is you start stacking evidence to it. If you believe there's great people in your life, who is great in your life? A best friend, someone else, who else? Start bringing them more in. Start realizing you already have great people in your life. And having great people in your life means you can bring in a great partner into your life. Who's with me? Good. So I need you to write down your belief and write that on this YouTube video, please. Before we leave now and then, we're going into our last five minutes. I want to just quickly check in on your health because health is actually the key part of the pyramid for our body to increase and to bring in a relationship. I'm just going to share that model with you right now. Here we go. This is the pyramid of success. So as we're looking at this pyramid of success, we can see physical body and health is actually the foundation of building everything else upwards. The next part is the emotion and meaning. And that's what we're going to be covering off in the work that we do over this next couple of weeks before the Love Festival. And then the third part is relationships. So to get us to relationships first, it's very important that we're in good physical body and health. Second part is to have good emotion and meaning because if you're always getting upset if you're always taking things personal if you're always doubting your partner it's not going to be a good relationship and then we create a beautiful relationship as that part and as we go forward 
we actually cover off different areas of life, finances, time, contribution, giving back to the world. So as we can see, it's so important for us to be able to master this area of physical health. So I want to ask you, I want you to commit to working out five times a week, even if that's going to a park for a walk, five times a week, 20 minutes a time. I want you to lift weights. I want you to work out. I want you to squat. I want you to get your body functioning. All right, get that strength built up inside of your body, even if you are slim. My wife's slim and got a beautiful body, but it's important that she goes gym as well because we need strength. We need energy to create this beautiful life. Second, what are you eating? I want you to commit to having at least one healthy meal a day. That's salad, being healthy. I love to fast. So I do intermittent fasting every single day. So the time that I open my food, the time that I start to eat is very late on in the afternoon. And then I finish around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. because I work quite late. So because of that, that's my time frame. But it makes my body re-energized. I get rid of any toxins from my body. And my body feels good as well as the weight loss, as well as feeding slip. There's also very good spiritual benefits to fasting. Your consciousness, your mind, your thoughts, your programming of what you think about all get aligned. So I want you to focus on this. So one, working out five times a week. Two, I want you to fast or I want you to eat healthy. I want you to be conscious of what you're eating. Three, I want you to meditate. Meditate on your new affirmation. I am bringing in a beautiful partner into my life. And I ask you, ask a question, why do I only bring in amazing people into my life? This is what Rishan Lakhani from Mind Valley talks about as loft questions and the incredible things. You ask yourself, why does the universe always support me? And you find the answers of why the universe always helps you and supports you. Why do I only attract incredible people into my life? And you do this over meditation. I do have a meditation that I can share with you if you want it. Just write in the comments if you do. Then I want you to do something you love. Do something you love once a day, singing, dancing, um, jogging, talking to your friend, cooking, whatever that is. Do something that you love. Because when you do something that you love, you start to bring that loving energy into your life. As you bring loving energy into your life, you start creating more love. And then you're in a loving state for when we get to the love fest. Who's with me? Every single day, do something that you love. Focus on it. What do you love? What do you love? You need to know what you love in order to love your life. Personally, I love to read. If I get five minutes of reading some spiritual book, I love it. It lifts my day up. It makes me smile. It helps my brain connect and think. It's incredible for me. Next thing I want you to do these daily. Next thing I want you to focus on is reading or learning. 15 minutes a day. Focus on reading or learning. The books that I recommended on that group call were men. I asked you to get The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter. Women, I asked you to get The Keys to the Kingdom by Alison Armstrong. These two books are huge at creating transformation as well as mindset shifts. Men, you'll get into your masculine and respect a woman and understand how to treat a woman, as well as understand how to be within a relationship. Women, you will understand the keys to a happy relationship. Alison Armstrong studied relationships for over 25 years and found these answers. So those two books, I want you to start reading. We have 13 days left until the Love Festival. Come on, I need you on your A game, all right? Let's bring love in. Next, I want you to mind your self-talk. Don't be having self-talk. If this event works for me, I'm never going to meet anyone. No, 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 no. I want you to bring in, I'm too old to have a relationship. I'm too, this is a problem, that's a problem. No, I don't want any of that. What I want you to bring in is love. I want you to be kind to yourself. I am doing the right steps to grow. I am taking steps to bring in a partner. I am taking the right action to bring in a partner. I want you to focus on that self-talk. 
Be positive to yourself. Be careful with your words. Be loving to yourself. And then finally, I want you to step into your power position of who you are. We're going to talk more about this next week. Why well, we to find a nice power position of who you are and the life that you want to create. I'm going to see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much. If you got some value from this, please drop it into the comments. I can't wait to see you all at Mumbai Love Festival. This is going to be absolutely incredible. I'll see you all March 11th, face to face. But I'm going to be seeing you on Tuesday. I forgot the date. <laughs> Tuesday for our second coaching session, which is going to take us deeper into understanding and letting go. I'll see you then. Thank you so much.